In my last video, I headed over to Utretan in the lakes, but then I ended up taking most of my shots on Tom Heights at the end of the day. In that video, I showed how I shot this image, but then used Capture One and Photoshop to produce this. After that video, a few people wanted to know, can this be done in Affinity Photo? The answer is yes, and in many ways it's a better tool for this sort of work. I'll be showing you how and why in this video, and I'll use it to go from this shot to this. In the last video, I had the camera set up like this, getting as near as I could to the foreground. For this shot, I just rotated the camera through 90 degrees to be horizontal. The tripod position is exactly the same and it's never changed. If you didn't see the last video, I was using a Fuji X-T3 with the Fuji 10-24 lens. The lens was set at 10mm and I didn't use any filters. After I took the shot, I imported the RAW file to capture one for processing. That allowed me to go from this starting image to this. The changes I applied are the same ones that I talked through in my other video. After processing in Capture One, I can export the image as either a PSD or 16-bit TIFF file ready for editing with Affinity Photo. Both formats preserve the image quality well and Affinity Photo works with either. With the image open in Affinity Photo, I'll start by duplicating the background layer. I'll be using this to make the foreground look much closer to the camera than it is. In Photoshop, I use the Transform tool to apply a destructive edit to the pixels of the layer. In Affinity, I can do the same thing with the Perspective filter in the Filter menu. The same filter is also in the toolbar on the left of the screen, but I'm not going to use that. Instead, I'll add it as a Live filter, which means that it's non-destructive. But before I can apply the Perspective filter, I need to select the foreground. I don't want my changes to affect the entire image, so I'll select the area that I want them to apply to. In the last video, I used a lasso tool to select the foreground, drawing carefully around the heather. This time, I'll just use the rectangular marquee tool to show you how much you can get away with, although it is better to use the lasso tool. I'll just click the marquee tool in the tools palette, and then I'll draw a rough selection around the foreground. Now I can add the perspective filter to the image as a new live filter using the layer menu. You'll find it under the distort heading. Then, I just need to click and drag the handles in the bottom corners of the frame to change the perspective. The amount of perspective distortion I can apply this way is absolutely crazy. I could never achieve a shot like this using just a wide angle lens. But I do have a problem. Look at the top edge of the selection I made. It's now completely obvious where it cuts into the background. The way I'm going to fix this is by adding a layer mask to the perspective live filter. Although the filter already has a mask, that's being used. I want to use a layer mask to keep the two separate because it gives me more flexibility to make other changes. When I select the filter and add a mask, it doesn't attach itself, so I need to drag and drop it into position on the filter. Now I can paint on the mask using the brush tool with a soft edge. I'm starting with a large brush and painting with black. By painting on the mask along the hard edge, I can blend the two layers together. Now it's looking good, but I'm going to zoom into 100% for a closer look. When I do that, I can see some softness in areas that aren't blending well. I can then use a smaller brush size to paint these in and out using black and white paint. If you want to switch between black and white whilst you're painting, just press the X on your keyboard. It toggles the brush between using the foreground and background colours. OK, that looks good and I could leave the editing there, but I'm not going to because I want to create an extreme wide angle effect. The way that I'm going to do this is by using the liquify filter, which is another live filter. What I love about these live filters is that they act like smart objects in Photoshop and they allow you to keep making adjustments. I can add the liquify filter to the same layer as the perspective filter and continue to edit the image. If you're going to make quite large changes as I am, you might want to use a large mesh setting. The mesh size, together with the brush size, helps control the changes. I'm starting with the pinch tool to paint over areas that I want to enlarge. It's a great way to enhance the foreground to make it look like it's inches from the camera. The other tool I want to use is the push tool. By clicking and dragging, I can use it to enlarge the mountains. 
But look what happens if I try to adjust something here. The image isn't changing. That's because the layer mask I used to blend the adjustments with the original image is affecting it. I can fix this though by creating a new layer consolidating all the other layers. Now when I apply the liquify filter to that layer I can distort the entire image. Let's compare the image now with the original background layer. You can see the filters are producing an amazing perspective change that's just not possible when using a wide angle lens alone. These live filters are non-destructive so I can reopen them and keep refining my changes. This is how you can make amazing perspective changes in Affinity Photo. If you haven't seen my previous video showing my processing in Capture One, be sure to watch it even if you don't use Capture One. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft, I'll see you soon for another video.